Oh, God bless you, viewers. We bring greetings to you all. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and that of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you today, the eleventh day of May in the year 2020. We want to hear what God has for us today. It is not our message, but a message from the Lord. Viewers, want to appreciate you for joining us whenever we come online. We appreciate you so immensely for the good work you're doing with us, sharing this gospel. Preaching. The Bible says we should go into the world and preach the gospel. So as you are sharing, as you are inviting others to hear the word of God, to join us, you are also preaching the gospel. We appreciate that. Thank you, and we urge you to keep on doing the good work with us. The good Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Even as I invite my precious wife, Sugar, to pray as we comment. Your blessed viewers this afternoon, we're here again to share the good word, the good news, that is the word of God, and it's all about Christ. You're welcome this afternoon, but before we start, I would like us to pray, but beginning with prayer, it's something good, it's something headway, and we'll start with prayer this afternoon. Our precious Father, will give you thanks and glory and honor. All adoration, because there is no like unto you and none to be compared unto you. Father, you are so faithful in keeping us. You are so wonderful. We appreciate you this afternoon. We thank you for the life of our brothers and our sisters all over the world. We appreciate you, Lord, for their families. We say thank you. We thank you for the good works you're doing in their life. We thank you that even in this season, oh God, Father, you never forget anyone. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we bless your name. We exalt you. We adore you. We magnify your name. You are so good. You are so kind. You are that incomparable God. You are that unchangeable God. You are that God who never failed. Even today, you have not failed us. You made us to be alive to see this day. Even as the sun set, we appreciate you. Father, we thank you for all these good works you're doing for us and for the viewers and for the listeners. Father, we exalt your name. Father, this afternoon we lift up your name above every other name. That whenever the children of God gather, the enemy also gather. There are powers who never want your children to hear your good word. Who never want you to speak to them. Father, whatsoever power from the pit of hell that will stand as an hindrance, we crush them with the precious blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speak at that thing. That is what the Bible told us. And on this word we stand by. Papa, even at this hour, we cover your sons and daughters, the listeners, with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. We soak them in the precious blood of Jesus. Lord of that Jesus. you will give them a new heart of God today to hear your word, the word that will transform them, the word that will renew them, the word that will revive them, the word that will make them to be bold that they have a father in heaven. This word they will hear today, it will do a new thing in their life. And your name shall be glorified in their life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our faithful Father will bring your word before you, my God and my Father. The same word you used Moses to speak. The same word you used Joseph to speak. The same word you used, O oh God, as many of your sons and daughters, O oh God, and the Bible to speak. The same word your servant, O oh God, is before you this afternoon. He is a messenger. Papa, may you pass through him, O oh God, to speak this word. My God and my Father, I pray for all trans, O God, upon his life, O God. He will not speak any word of his own, but your own word. Father, that you will pass through this word, O God, and do a new thing in the life of your sons and daughters today. Thank you, faithful Father, that we all will be renewed, that we all will be revived, that we all will be strengthened through your word. Thank you, ancient of days. Even, O God, you will use this word, O God, to heal as many that are sick. To heal as many that are wounded. Thank you, faithful Father. 
Blessed be unto your holy name, even as we pray with thanksgiving in the name of God the Father, Amen. in the name of God the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Amen. You, oh Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Help me find way. Oh my kind of love. this moment. close to you, Lord. God bless you, viewers. This morning, it may be morning in your country, but it is afternoon in our country, Nigeria. We want, let us read from the book of Matthew, chapter, Matthew chapter 15, from verse 1. Let's hear what the word of God says in Matthew chapter 15 and from verse 1. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 1 I read. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying, Why do they, why do thy, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Three. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For, for God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that causeth father or mother let him die the death. Five. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Six, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandments of God of non effect by your tradition. Seven, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, these people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Nine, but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Ten, and he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Eleven, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Twelve. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Now, looking at where we read from, we read from the book of Matthew and verse 15. This word in Matthew Verse 15, it's a story where the Pharisees came to Jesus. And they were telling him that, why is it that your people do not wash their hands before they eat? That they don't follow the tradition of 
the land. And Jesus was trying to explain to them that there are most times you think these people don't, my disciples don't obey the law. But you, do you obey the law? Do you obey God? Do you follow God's instruction? Do you follow the law which your fathers has kept right from the days of old? This morning in your country, but afternoon in my country, it may interest you to know that the Lord had a message. And that message is the topic that we want to treat today or want to talk about today is don't copy the traditions of others. Don't copy the tradition of others. Mainly, this message is for our dear River State Governor, His Excellency Barrister E. N. Wiki, and to other leaders all over the globe. But this message is centering to our dear Governor. Now, talking about tradition, this afternoon, we want to talk about tradition. Tradition, what does it mean? What does the word tradition mean? Tradition simply means a part of culture. Oxford Learners Dictionary said, tradition simply means a part of culture that is passed from person to person, generation to generation. A tradition means a culture that passes from one person to the next person, to generation to generation. It can also be possibly defining in details from family to family, such as the way to celebrate. It is also an inherited pattern of thoughts or action a specific practice of long standing a specific practice of long standing these are the definition when it comes to tradition we are talking about tradition and where we read from jesus was talking with the pharisees about tradition where they say washing of hands but in this context we are looking at the tradition how or in which we govern our states. That is the reason why we are specifically talking to our dear governor because this message has been in us for some time now. It has been in us, it has been a body. I don't know how to deliver it. I don't know how to say it. I don't know where to start from. But today, it pleases the Lord that we start this message, that we do this message. It pleases the Lord that we commence with this message. God bless you. It has not been easy because this message are not our messages. But I believe God will help us to deliver this message as it has come to us. There will be no adding of any. There will be no subtractions. And there will be no addition. Look at it. We are talking about tradition. When Jesus Christ was talking to the Pharisees, when they came to him and said, Jesus, your servants, your disciples do not keep the tradition of the Lord. Look at it. He said, verse 2 of, of Matthew chapter 15. Why do thy disciple transgress the traditions of elders is a question. A question mark is there. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now these people came to Jesus and were saying, why did your, 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 your disciples, those who follow you, don't keep the laws of the elders, the traditions of the elders? They don't wash their hands while they eat food. Now look at verse 3. But Jesus answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Today, why is it that our government, they are also keepers of the law? But why is it that they transgress 
the commandment of the law. Why is it that most of them do not keep the law of the land? That is what we want to discuss today. Why is it that the governments who are ought to obey God, because being in, 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 in authority, if God places you somewhere, it is not your power, it is not your making. God chooses you among thousands of persons, among millions of persons, to make you a head, to make you a governor, to make you a senator, to make you a president, to make you a local government chairman, to make you a leader in any capacity, even being a king. But today, you, the government, you want men to keep your laws. You want men to obey your laws. You want men to follow your laws. But you don't keep the laws of God. You flash the laws of God. You for you don't obey. You don't we don't obey. You don't follow. The leaders don't follow the laws. They don't keep the laws, but they want men to keep their laws. God will help us to understand where we are coming from and where we are going to end at the end of the day. We just define the meaning of tradition. We says it's a pattern, it's a culture that grows from one generation to another. Now look at it. There are reasons why we follow old traditions. There are reasons why men, why women follow old traditions. There are some reasons why we follow old traditions. Now, one of the reasons why a man, a woman, or a sitting governor, or people follow traditions is because we feel that they are correct. Now, what are the traditions? Let's look at the traditions. Let's look at the traditions of the leaders, of governors, of presidents, most especially our river state, our dear river state that we are. One of the traditions I feel that is a norm is our government in every second tenor of every governor I have come to observe or I have tried to do research to see is that when it comes to a second term, most of the government begin to do things ordinarily they cannot do in their first term. Now, the care for the human being most times are not really there. First of all, before I go further, I want to appreciate our dear governor, His Excellency E.N. Wiki. Wiki, when he was, when he came in, in his first tenor, God placed him there as the governor of our state. When God placed him there, we are happy of what he did, that even if his, predece his predecessor were having little crap fracas, which I believe God will help them to settle. He, he did not abandon any project. He didn't abandon projects of his predecessor. Right, Honorable Chibike Rotimi Amechi. He did not abandon them. He tried to see how he can follow up with them, complete them. There are many of them that we are enjoying today. There are so many things he did in his first tenor. Is it about abolishing a tradition that has been there, which is which is a, a, a canary? We do they do canary? They bring in masquerades and whatever. He switches over to praises. There are a lot of things he has done while he came in as a governor. Now there are traditions. Say so why we follow tradition? One because we feel they are correct. There are traditions that we are following because we feel they are correct. What are these traditions? Traditions of, ah, in my second tenor, I will, I will do whatever I want to do. And whatever they say is not my business. Because I don't need their vote any longer. But I want you to remember, will you not have a 
a, a successor? Will somebody not come? Will you not bring in somebody that will take over from you? If you want to follow the norms, if you want to follow the traditions, that people who are there yesterday, they feel like, ah, I will manhandle these people in my second tunnel. In my first tunnel, I was kind with them. I was generous to them. I will do this, I will do that in this second tunnel. Let me tell you, we are here as a messenger of the law that leaders of our dear countries do not copy the traditions of others. Do not copy those traditions. Those people feel that these are the norms. These are the right things to do. So they keep on with those traditions, not knowing that those traditions are not correct. They are not correct. Those traditions are not the correct tradition. Because the Lord made us to understand. If you read down from where we read, if you read down, let's look at that same Matthew chapter 15 and verse 9. He said, but in vain they worship me. Teaching for doctrines, the commandment of men. In vain. After they have assumed office, after God has given them their heart cry of this, in vain they teach men fake doctrines. Because these things are not, these things do not start from, from the present government. It started from the first government. That is the reason why our former president, Good Lord Jonathan, said, let us make a law that each governor will serve, or president or will serve for a, a six years term. And after six years, as you come, you will not come back for anything again. That law was not implemented. It was not agreed. Because so many persons wants the power but when power is given to you how do you handle it how do you manage it how do you work with it how do you make sure you don't manhandle the people how do you make sure you don't teach people false doctrine how do you make sure you don't teach people doctrines that are of men and not and, and, and not doctrine of god today why we still maintain these doctrines or why we still maintain these things is because we felt these things are correct. But we don't know that these things are not correct. They are not correct. That is the reason why we are here today to see how we can work on this pattern or tradition that has been a norm in our government. Two, the reason why we follow them it is because others are doing it. Yes, because you felt like others did it. Others past governors did it. Other past president did it. Maybe senators, as well assembly members and speakers. And you too, you want to do it. It is not correct. It is not the right thing to do. As believers, as Christians, it is not the right thing to do. Remember, our dear governor, you have declared this state, river state, to our hearing that it is a Christian state. Now, if it is a Christian state, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify the Father in heaven. I want to ask, is the tradition that we are following, is it the right tradition that we are following? Is it because others did it? If others that were in darkness do something wrong, you that is a light, or you that is in the light, will you also do thing that is wrong? When the Bible has let you understand that your light should shine 
before men that they may see your good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Look at it. Is it because others are doing it? That's why you too you want to indulge. Is it because others are doing it? That's why you too you want to do it? No. The Bible has made us to understand that we should not be equally yoked with the unbelievers. If we have declared this state, if you have said this state is for river state, act in that manner. Do in that manner. I will come to that. I will come to some things you have done earnestly to appreciate that you call this state a Christian state. But let's go further. We are talking about things that we do and felt that it is right. I said, because we feel they are correct, because others are doing it, because we are not bothered to find out why. Another reason why we are doing what we are doing is because we are not bothered to find out why. We are not bothered to find out why the state remains one, one way, one pattern. Why is it that when it gets to election every time, there will be bloodshed? Why is it that we don't bother to find out why? Why is it that every time there will be tussling, there will be killing, there will be problem in the state? Why is it that when each party wins, the other party does not come together to congratulate each other in river states. One of the reasons why we are still following old tradition is because we are not asking why. It's because we don't want to ask why. It's because we feel like it is not important. It is because we feel we don't want to ask why. I will tell you a story that I read. I read a story that there's a commander in an army division. This commander wanted to set a slab, a concrete slab, where there will be an activities of the armies. Whenever they want to do meetings or whenever they want to do parade, the commander will always stand there for others maybe to address the, like, like a podium or like a pulpit, a pulpit where minister stands. So the commander commanded that they should get a concrete, cement it at a particular spot. Now, when they did that, in the night, white animal will come and run on it. When white animal comes and run on it, in the morning, what they did must have been destroyed by wild animals. But what happened? This now, this commander said, Okay, if white animal will keep crossing it, I will send four guides, four army guides, to be guiding that cement for three weeks only. That was the instruction from the commander. He sent four guides to guide the slab for three weeks. When he guide the slab, when they guide the slab for three weeks, by then, this concrete must have been solid for, for use. Now, when this commander now asks the men to be guiding this slab, there will be a changeover, there will be a routine of these armies that do, that do the guide. After some week, before the three weeks will last, this commander was transferred from that zone to another zone. Now, the commander that came in, the commander that took over, when he came, he did not ask, why are these men standing here? Why are these men guiding this concrete? Why are these men guiding this slab? Why are these men guiding this place? He did not ask. The new commander did not ask. The new commander came. 
He felt it's a, it is a tradition. It is a normal thing. Everybody has been doing it. I met it. So I want to follow it. They came. That is how different commander has been coming, have been going for 80 good years. That has been a tradition. Nobody asks questions. Nobody wants to find out why they are doing things this way. But God so kind. Another commander was transferred after 80 years to that same zone, to that same place. When the commander came, the commander now asked, why is it that four persons will be guiding this slab, this concrete slab? A routine thing. They told him that it's a norm. It's the tradition that they came and met it that way. That that is how they have been guiding the slab for years. No, this commander said, no, I must not follow the tradition of men. I must not work with men at all times. I must consult. I must know the reason behind these people standing and guiding this lab all over the night, all over the afternoon, all over the midnight. Why would that why would that be guide on this lab? He bent on discovery. He bent on knowing the reason why this persons need to guide the slab. And he find out, he got a note from the commander that instituted, instituted that, that order. When he find out, he discovered that this man did this thing just because he wants a platform where they can stand as commanders and address the audience, other, other armies, other generals, other persons. That that thing was supposed to be there for the, the 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 guy was supposed to be there for just three weeks, so that by then the concrete the slab must have been strong for use. But every other commander that came was just there, keeping a law of ignorance, punishing other army to go there and be guiding there in the morning in the afternoon, in the evening, and at midnight. But this man came to ask, came to find out, why do we guide these labs? And he got to the roots to find out why we need to guide the slab. And he discovered that that slab was meant, the reason why it was guided was because when they did it, white animal was running on it. And it was supposed to be guided for only three weeks. But because of ignorance, because of we want to follow tradition, we want to do like others are doing, the slab was guided for 80 years. River State has gone through so many things when it comes to election and governorship for years. I have been in this state for years. River State has gone through so many trauma. Whenever it comes to second tenor of governors, River, something else, begin to work in the governor. In the first tenor, there is nothing like task force. But in the second tenor, you will see task forces and task forces all over. In second tenor, there are some decisions that the government are taking that are not wise. Ordinarily, in the first tenor, because they want the vote of the common man the second time, they will not do it. It has been a norm. It has been a normal thing. Please, let us find out the spirit behind this. There is a spirit behind it. There is a problem behind it. There is a reason why this has been going on. It is time for us to find out, dig out, if River State has been declared a state, a Christian state, then we must follow the rules, regulations of being a Christian. This commander find out. The commander now got the result. Ah, so you mean for 80 years, people have been guiding this lap ignorantly. And he stopped it. He said, ah, this lap is now okay. Let's not guide it any longer. And that's how it is. Bring it to our day-to-day -day activities. The elections are approaching. In the next one or two years, We'll be going. We'll be going for 
campaigns for elections to come? Why the blood shed every year? Why the blood shed every year? Why the kidnappings every year? Why the killings every year? Why must we use the heads of virgins every year? Why must we seek every other gods when it comes to election in our states? And today or later, those gods will begin to torment us. We begin to come and to remind us what we the oath we have taken. And they will want us to abide to their rules and not the rule of God. Let's ponder this. Why not we get time to search the root cause of these problems? Why are things like this? Why not get a search as this commander search and find out that these people are doing things in ignorance? Another reason why we do them is because we don't study the word of God. Another reason why things are normal Things are the way it is. It's because we don't study the word of God. Let's look at the book of let's look at the book of Psalm chapter 2 and verse 10. Psalm chapter 2 and verse 10. The reason, another reason why we keep these traditions is because we don't study the word of God. What does it say? Book of Psalm chapter 2, verse 10. I read. Be wise now, therefore. O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Say, be wise. All you need as governors, as president, as leaders in this time is to study the word of God. Study to show thyself approved. We need a governor that has declared this state. Have time to study the word of God. Read it again. Psalm chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, Be wise now, therefore. Be wise now, therefore. O ye kings. O ye kings and governors. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Be instructed, O judges of the earth. Be instructed, O judges of the earth. Verse 11 of that word, what does it say? Serve the Lord with fear. Say, serve the Lord with fear. And rejoice with trembling. And rejoice with trembling. Serve the Lord with fear. Kings and governors, God has placed you there. Doesn't mean that other persons are not better than you. He placed you there for a reason and for a purpose. Serve the Lord with what? With fear. One reason why we still do those things that we are doing as a normal tradition. Every year we quarrel, we fight. When it comes to second tenor, when it comes to election period, there is always uprise, there is always a problem. The media will be shaking, newspapers will be selling, media house will be shaking, killings here and there. It's because we don't study the word of God. It is because we don't follow the instruction from, the, from, from God, from the Bible. This Bible, as a governor, it will help you day and night. I will come to I will come to COVID nineteen. We are not talking about that now. It will help us day and night. The reason why we still do those things that we are doing is because we don't study the word of God. We just read the book of Psalm chapter two, verse ten and verse eleven. We say we should be wise as kings. We say we should study the word of God. We should hold on to God. We should follow him day and night. We should walk with him. Let's look at First King. First King. Chapter 1. And verse 30. We're talking about why we see click on old traditions. First King. Chapter 1 of verse 30. We are, talking, we are talking about looking at old traditions. 
Why we still keep them? The reason why we still keep them is because we don't study the word of God. We don't click on the word of God. Are you there? First King chapter 1 verse 30. Yes. Even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon thy throne, my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Now, if you look at this word, God used to tell leaders who takes after them. Governor Wicke, who will succeed you? Will the person go in there successfully without fight? God was telling David that his son, Solomon, will succeed him. Why? Because David was reading the word of God. David clicked onto the instruction of God. So he is always a light. God always talk to him, speak to him. The person that will take over you, that you will come and declare that he's the next person that we will work with, that we, we should work with him. Because you will not work there forever. You have your time and you will go. You will bring in somebody that will work and take over from you. Will that person be there? Or come in there without fights, without killings, without troubles. Do you know, or do you remember, or do you think it may even be the person you want in that will be there? It is time to click to God. God kept you there for a reason and for a purpose. Let me remind you, my dear lovely governor. That you are a Levite. God brought you here and God allowed you to come back this second tenor. Reason being, He wants you to change the old tradition. My able governor, change the traditions, change the norms, those things that are very common that people do. In government house. Change them. Change them. Change so many things that people are doing. I don't have time to mention them, which all of us know. There are so many things that our government do that are not right. That are not right. That are not right. It is time to change some certain things. Now let's go further. The consequences of inherited tradition. There are consequences of inherited tradition. Now, what are the consequences of inherited tradition? There are... I have 30 consequences of inherited tradition. But because of time, I will only give three consequences that is being stated here of we living in that same pattern. And the, 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 the pattern of the elders and don't follow the direction of God. Number one consequence of living in the old tradition is you will die quickly. As a governor, as a president, as a leader in anywhere you find yourself, if you live in the traditions of the elders, from where we read the book of Matthew chapter 15, if you read, if you live in the tradition of the elders, you may die on time. You may die on time. You may die untimely. In that, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 29. If the consequence of 
living in old traditions, the norms of the elders, the past governors, the past presidents, the past senators, the past House of Assembly members, in your time, you may die untimely. Deuteronomy, let's hear it. Deuteronomy 32, 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they will consider their later hand. Look at it. Oh, that they were what? Wise. They were wise. That they understood this. That they understand that the consequence, one of the consequences of living in old tradition as governors that what? That they will consider their later end. That they will consider their later end. My governor, His Excellency, are you considering how you will end this race? Are you considering how you will end as a governor? Are you considering how you will end being a governor? Are you going to end it well? Are you considering it? Read the book of Deuteronomy. Verse 32 from verse 1. Read the book of Deuteronomy. Another reason why. Another reason why. Or the consequence of following the old tradition. The second reason is it will affect our generation to come. See, if we live in old tradition, my, my able governor, my lovely governor, if you live in the past tradition of the past governors, and if you don't correct your second tenor from today, it may affect your generation. Because whatever cost people lay on you may come on you and your generation to come. It is time to reframe and sit up. There are consequences of living in old tradition. After all, they will not vote me again. After all, I will not get their votes. After all, I don't need them to vote me. It is River State. I have ruled for eight years. So what do I need them for? What do I want them for? I will do whatever I want to do. I will take decision whatever I want to take without thinking twice that it may affect your generation. It may affect your children unborn. Look at what is happening today to other past governors, to other past presidents. Where are their children? Where are their activities? Where are they? Who has taken over from them? Who has taken over from them? Where is their children? Where is their children working? Who knows the activities of their children? Who knows the, the, the history of their children? Past governors. Where are their children? Where are their wives? Where are their family members? They may be eating the, the money they stole. But how is the life of their relatives and those around them? How is it? How? See, one of the consequences of following all traditions of governors, Governor Wige, I'm speaking to you directly as the message comes to me directly to you. One of the consequences of living the old ways, the same way, the same thing other governors have been doing, that you will not change. One of the consequences, it may affect your generation unborn. It may affect them. Because you will not be there forever. The new governor or the new president or the new people, if they look at your activities, their activities are wrong, that's your name. Either Ezebuwa, either Wike, may not be heard. Whenever they want to hear that name, people will not give employment to your children. People will not give employment, even, even admit them in any way. The consequences of living in old traditions, traditions of the elder, 
it may affect your generation unborn, your generation to come. That is why this call is coming today. That is why this, this, this message is coming today. Governor, you are a Levite. You are a God sent to River State. Don't join these people of yesterday and walk in their ways, walk in their paths, because it may affect your tradition. It may affect your generation to come. You may not even live in River State. You may not even dwell in River State. Your own may not even be in Lagos. You may not even live in Abuja. You may end up outside this country after working for the state. Look at the roundabouts you are doing. Look at the flyovers you are doing. Look at all the good work you are doing. Look at how you are securing you, the lives of the people of River State. Look at how it treasures you enough that you come out, I see you come out stopping cars that violate the laws the day you ask us to lock down. Because you cherish them. Because you love us. You have been doing a lot of things. That is why the call is coming today. Do not follow the traditions of the elders, the tradition of yesterday, because if you follow them, one of the consequences, it may affect your generation. The third consequence is you may end up in prison. You may end up in prison not enjoying your money. Another consequence of following the old tradition, also look at Psalms, Psalms chapter 34, 39 and verse 4. One of the consequences is you may end up in prison after governor, after your governorship. You may end up in prison. So, leave the traditions of the elders. It may have favored them yesterday that after governorship, they are living large. They are, they, they are working fine. But some governors I know after coming out from their governorship, after they have ruled their people, no matter the money they acquired, the wealth they acquired, most of them are in prison. Governor Wiki, please, walk right, do the right, that you may not end up in prison. Because one of the consequences of following the works of the elders is that you may end up in prison. You may not enjoy your wealth. You may not enjoy what you have labored for. You may not enjoy what you have gathered for. There is a current call to you today. Check your activities as a governor. Are you following the traditions of the elders? Those traditions that are not biblical. Those traditions that are not healthy. Those traditions that are not worthy. What is Psalm? Psalm says, Chapter 39, verse 4. Lord, make me to know my hands. Lord, pray this prayer, governor, every day. Read this word every day. Lord, make me to know my end. Psalm 30, Psalm 39, verse 4. Lord, make me to know my end. Go ahead. And the measure of my days. And the measure of my days. What it is. What it is. That I may know. That I may know. How free I am. How free you are. How you, how you are. Governor, look at this. Look at this. This was the prayer of David. David was also a king. David was also a, a ruler and a leader like you. And David cried. David cried. Say, oh Lord, help me to number what? To know my days. Help me to number my days. Psalm 30 what? 39 and verse 4. Help me to number my days. Lord, help me to know my end and the measure of my days. What it is that I ask God every day, our governor, as a leader. You are trying your best. You are doing your best. Yes. Remember Moses. I would like you to be Moses. When Moses was really, was took the people from Egypt and in the wilderness, they were very stubborn. 
They were very stubborn. The people were very stubborn. The people could not even respect Moses. But Moses was patient. Moses was had that spirit of endurance. Governor, your excellency, what happened to Moses at the end of the day? Remember what happened to Moses. People you are leading is very stubborn. The market women are stubborn. My wife sitting there, sitting, sitting down here with me is a market woman. They are very stubborn. Religious, a lot of people are stubborn. But that will not make you not to know what to do, how to handle these people. Moses was careful. Even when God wants to destroy them, Moses will plead and say, God, do not destroy these people. Because if you destroy them, what will become of me? What will become of my faith? There is a call to you today. There is a call to you today. Don't let men push you to end this race the wrong way. Don't let men push you to do what you are not supposed to do. Don't let men push you to take decisions you are not supposed to take. Don't let men push you to do things you are not supposed to do. You are a leader. What happened to Moses? It was because of anger. It was because of anger. Moses could not control his anger. And what happened to him? Moses did not see promised land. Promised land that he has nurtured. Promised land that he has suffered. Promised land that he has worked for. But because of anger, he could not see. He could not see. He could not see the promised land. Governor Wiki, E.N. Wiki, God is addressing you today. God used to speak to kings through prophets. He has sent me as a messenger to you. I may not see you physically to tell you, but I know this video will get to you. You will get to you will get to you will get to listen to it. That's why the message is coming today, all over the world, addressing you and other leaders, but specifically you. Don't let the attitude of men, don't let the character of men. The behavior of men to make you do wrong things at this dying hour, at this second tell of yours. One of the consequences, like I said, is you may end up in prison and you may not enjoy what the Lord has for you. Let's look at Psalm 90 and verse 12. Psalm 90 and verse 12. Don't wait until you don't enjoy what God has for you. No, Governor Wiki, you have done your best. You have tried your own. Try to strive to see that you walk to the end so that you will not miss the promised land like Moses did. So that you won't miss the promised land. There are promises the Lord has for you as a Levite. Walk hard. Work hard. People are stubborn. No matter how you try to, to save, save them or try to direct them, they are stubborn. But don't let their stubbornness make you shortcuts. Make you not get to the promised land at the end of your tenor. Psalm 90 verse 12. Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, if you read Psalm 90 verse 12, the Lord said, Teach us to number our days. My dear governor, number your days in this second tenor so that you will apply wisdom. My governor, number your days in this your second tenor that you may apply wisdom. Apply wisdom. Governor, apply wisdom so that you will not fall out of your faith. Remember how you came in as a governor of the second tenor. I will come to that. Now, don't copy the traditions of other leaders. Do not copy traditions of other leaders. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 7. Let us not copy the traditions of other leaders. Don't copy traditions of other leaders. I have 72 reasons to give you why we should not copy the traditions of other leaders, other governors. 
Deuteronomy 32 and verse 7. What does it say? Remember the days of old. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father. Ask thy father. And he will show thee. And he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. Go and ask from the past governors. Go and ask from the past leaders. How are they recognized? How are they recognized in their communities? How are they recognized in their states? Go and ask the elders. Go and ask the past governors. How is their faith? How are they living? How are they recognized? Do not, that's where we are now, do not copy the traditions of the elders. If you will not copy the traditions of the elders, what are the things you need to do? One of the things you need to do, my able governor, find out what I want to do. Is it important? Is it necessary? Is it okay? Ask question. Let's look at Job chapter 8 and verses 8. Ask questions. Is it important? If you will not want to follow the traditions of the elders, my governor, ask questions. Find out. Job chapter 8 and verses 8. Job chapter 8 verse For in where? For in where? I pray thee. I pray thee. Of the former age. Of the former age. And prepare yourself. And prepare yourself. To the search of their fathers. To the search of their fathers. Governor, you will become an elder statesman after this your tenor. You will become an elder. What are the dissidents? What are the precedents? What, what do you want to keep for others that want to come after you? For advice. Find out the actions you want to take. Find out the things you want to do. Is it important? Is it necessary? Are you working on your manifesto? Are you working on the records why you are here? I listened to late E.A. Agoma, one of the father that Hey. I think he said he was one of those who helped to write your blueprint. He was once interviewed and he said a lot of things how they have been guiding you. Now such men are no longer there. Who are you finding out from? Who are you asking from? Who are you seeking advice from? Who are you working with so that you will not follow the, the works of the elders? You will not do the wrong thing. Governor, ENWK, who is your father? Who are you taking advice from? Are you, meet, are you having time of the Lord? Are you finding out from the Lord? Is your spiritual eyes open to see, to know what you are fighting? To know how you are leading people. To know how you are leading your state. Ask question. Find out. The Bible is here to guide you. I don't know the spiritual father that you are beckoning on. I don't know the spiritual father you are following. But they should guide you. If you don't have one, look for one. That will guide you. That will always be there to warn you. When you want to go astray. Not those that will beat in drum for you. 
When it's time to dance the dance, they will not be there to follow you and dance the dance. They will be beating the drum. But when it's time to dance, they will not join you to dance the dance. My governor, my able governor, it is time for you to find out. Do the right thing. Ask questions. Don't follow the advice of the wrong man. They will not leave you right. Remember what happened to Jeroboam. Jeroboam followed the wrong advice of his, his circles, his mates. At the end of the day, he, he did not go anywhere. What about Absalom? Absalom followed the advice of Ayutofe and other councils. What happened to them? What is their history? How did they end? What happened to them? My able governor, it is time for you to correct so many things in that government house. What is the chaplain? Or how is the chapel in government house? How activities? How activities? How prayerful you are? In this time of COVID-19, it is not the time to lean onto your own strength. It is not the time to lean onto your own understanding. It is not the time to lean onto your own powers. It is time to call on God. You have locked down the state. Thank you that you have called it back. But as from those days that you want to lock the state down, declare fasting. Let each and everybody come out on the streets and cry to God. It is time to cry to God. It is not time to seek your personal help. It is not time to wear nose masks. It is not time to run around looking for help from men. It is time to cry to God. It is time to cry to God. If other states are shutting down churches, if other states are doing a particular thing, don't follow them. Find out from God. What do I do in time of COVID-19? Look at it. You don't dream again. Look at what happened in the time of the Bible. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Pharaoh had a dream. Joseph interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. And the land came out of mess. Egypt would have been a doom. But Egypt did not fall into doom because he slept. Pharaoh slept had a dream. And Joseph interpreted the dream. And Joseph through the help of God, was able to work with Pharaoh. And the land of Pharaoh could not, Egypt could not enter what they call famine, crisis. Wiki, are you still dreaming? Governor Wiki, are you dreaming? If you are dreaming, how are you working with the dream? How are you allowing the dream? Work on you. It is time for you to sleep, have a dream. And tell God, what do I do in time of COVID-19? If others are closing churches, I have declared this state a Christian state. Will I also close church? It is time for you to ask questions. It is time for you to find out. It is time for you to seek God. Not your own help. Look at what Job said in Job chapter 8 and verses 8. Look at what Job said. When Job was in time of crisis, Look at what he said. For in where I pray thee. For in where I pray thee. Of the former age. Of the former age. And prepare the self. And prepare the self. To the search of their fathers. To the search of their fathers. Job was in state of dilemma. Job was in state of confusion. Job never knew what happened to him. But Job did not look for self help. Job looked unto God, the author and feature of their faith. We can. Enter your house, do some days fasting, cry to God to give you a solution to COVID-19. Cry to God to give you solution to this problem. What you will come and do, that you will be free from it. You are trying your best, you are doing your best. But don't do it with your powers, because your power will fail you. Don't do it with the anointing, because the anointing will fail you. But when you do it with the power of God, the anointing of God, God will help you. And he will see you through. What about the time of King 
Nebuchadnezzar. He had a dream. Daniel interpret his dream. Who is interpreting your dream as a governor? Who is interpreting your dream for you as a governor? The dreams you are having. So that you will not lead the people awry and miss. But you lead them right. So that after your second tenor, men will come to you for advice. Younger governors will come to you. Younger aspirants will come to you for advice. Because you are a Levite. Because you have declared this state a, 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 a Christian state. Look at it. Another thing you need to do. Follow traditions of God and not of men. We'll look at Psalm 25 and verse 4. Follow tradition of God, which you have been doing. You have canceled canary. You are not doing worship. But did the worship, did it take place last year? Did the worship take place last year? Did the worship take place last year? I don't know if the worship took place last year. Follow the tradition of God and not of men. What does it say? Psalm 24 verse 5. Psalm 25 and verse 4. 25 and verse 4. Leave me in thy truths. Leave me in thy truths. And teach me. And teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. For thou art the God of your salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. The, on God you wait and not on man. Read verse 14. On God you wait and not on man. Follow the tradition of God. Verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. The secret of the Lord. The secret of the Lord is on them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. And if his, your secret is to fear God, he will show you his covenant. He will show you his covenant. Governor Wicke, the secret of the Lord is for you to follow his covenant. The secret of God is for you to hear him out. It's for you to follow him. It's for you to walk with him. It's for you to wait for him to direct you. Whenever you want to take action, ask him. Is it necessary? Is it important? Should I? Should I not? Will it have implication to me on me, even as a governor? Find out from God. Ask for wisdom and knowledge from God. Ask of wisdom from God. First King chapter three and verse nine, verse seven and verse nine. I'm running up. One thing you should do. For not to follow the tradition of men, you need to ask wisdom from God. Governor Wicke, ask wisdom from God. Ask knowledge from God that you may know what to do and what not to do. First King chapter 3. The Mama, God bless you, I can see you. Ask wisdom from God. Chapter 3, verse 7. Yes. And now, and now, oh Lord, my God, oh Lord my God, thou hast made my, thy servant king. Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. Instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. And, but I am a little child. Moses, uh, 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 Solomon is 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 making this pro, pro, proclamation now. Go ahead. I know not how to go. Solomon said, "I know not how to go out or come, or come in." Go ahead, verse 5. Verse 4, I mean. Read, to, read it to, yeah, 8, I mean. And thy servant is in the midst. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, of thy people which thou hast chosen. Which thou chosen. A great people. That cannot be numbered. Or counted for multitude. These people you are living in River State are not, they can, you can't number them. They cannot be counted for multitude. to the governor. We can ask God for wisdom. Ask God for knowledge. Go ahead. Verse 9. Verse 9 of First King chapter 3, verse 7, 8 to 9. Go ahead, verse 9. Give therefore thy servants. Give therefore thy servants. An understanding. An understanding. An understanding hearts. An understanding hearts. To judge thy people. To judge. Ask God for understanding to judge us. You, we are your people that you are ruling. That I may design 
between good and bad. That you may design good and bad. And Governor Wike. Is able to judge this by so great a Governor Wike, this is the prayer of Solomon to God. First King chapter 3, verse 7 to verse 9. Solomon was saying, these people you gave me. It is not my right. It is not my right that I am their governor. It is not my right that I am. I want to lead them. Solomon was asking God for wisdom. My dear beloved governor, ask God for wisdom. So that you will not do the wrong thing at this your last tenor. Ask God for wisdom that you may not do the wrong thing. Now that you are running up your tenor, ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. Remember how you came back to power, second tenor. Remember, myself and my beloved wife were there when Daniel Colanda. We are at the stadium. We are at Eastern Bypass Beach, Omega Beach. Yourself and your wife were sitting down like this. Governor Wicke, you cried. You shed tears when the worship session was going on. You shed tears. You cried. You cried. Hey, my father. Governor Wicke, when men want to take position from you, when men won't, don't want you to come back, Governor Wicke, you cried. You cried to God. You cried. You cried. You cried. On that ground, you cried. God heard it. God saw your tears. He saw your tears and gave you back second tenor. Ordinarily, you don't merit it. Ordinarily, you cannot. With, with, with all the power that are befalling you, Churches prayed for you. Churches cried for you. But now those churches are closed. Hey! No wonder. Those churches are closed. Those churches who prayed for you during second tenor. When you want to go back. Those churches who cry. Because of your, your good deeds. In your first tenor. They say no. We want you back. Myself cried. My wife cried. We prayed for you to come back. How do you want to end it? How do you want to end it? How do you want to end the second tenor? Governor, we can ask for wisdom and knowledge. Ask for wisdom and knowledge. Remember the tears you shed. The tears. You and your wife. Remember the tears. Remember the tears. I will round up. I will round up. I will conclude by saying, do not allow the tradition of men because you walk in ignorance and go to hell. Do not allow the tradition of men because you walk in ignorance and go to hell. There are some quotes. There are some scriptures I, I still need to quote. But I will just give you these quotes as a leader. Look at them. All that you are doing, all that you are doing, as a governor, as a leader. Above all, always remember that there is a reward for every sacrifice and action you take. Therefore, I implore you to be objective and transparent in all your dealings and treat all equally, no matter their reaction. Do your best as our dearly beloved governor. Forgiveness is not optional, but it is mandatory. Governor Wiki, forgiveness is not optional, but forgiveness is mandatory. Let men see you as his hands and, and his voice. Be the Bible, so we read till they die. 
Governor Wike, you're a Levite. You're a Levite. Be the Bible that people will read till they die. Be the Bible that people will read till they die. If you want to stand out from the crowd, my governor, if you want to stand out from other governor, give people reasons not to forget you. The secret of forgiveness is to forgive everything and understand nothing. Don't try to analyze the weight of the heart. That is the secret of forgiveness. That is the secret of forgiveness. Makaya lama. Zam tulekete isakaya. May your last days in office be a one building legacy that will never be forgotten. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10 and verses 28 as we round up. Two scriptures as we round up. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 28. Proverbs chapter 10 and verses 28. Go ahead, Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 28. Proverbs chapter 10 and 28. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. But the expectation of the wicked shall perish. But the expectation of the wicked shall perish, my governor. Every expectation of every wicked man in you shall perish if you walk in the right way. Now you look at Proverbs. Chapter 23 and verse 18. He said, For surely there is an end, and that expectation shall not be cut off. Surely there is always an end to every problem. My dearly beloved governor, there is, will be an end to COVID-19. I know how strongly you are fighting it. There will surely be an end to COVID-19. And your expectation shall never be cut off. Your expectation will not be cut off. But look at this. Do not copy the traditions of other governors. Do not copy the traditions. Because nobody will vote for you. Don't manhandle the people. Your task force on transport, on trading, on whatever they are right. But you review them. Because most of them do things that you don't send them to do. Most of them do excess things because you didn't send the policeman to kill that woman. But, the, but, the, but that man shot his fellow police sergeant. Is it you that sent them? No. Review their activities. I don't say you should ban them. No. Review their activities so that they will not go back and bring you harm that you will not forget. That you will regret of constituting them. Look at the activities and what you do. Surely your expectation of bringing us out of COVID-19 will never be cut short. We want to pray. I don't know how many persons are there at the isolation center. The last time I heard, it was 17. Another news I heard. Two has been discharged. I don't know how many is left. But we are here to pray that surely there is an end to every problem. There is an end to COVID-19. There is an end to copying of old traditions of the elder does, that does not have the direction and root of the word of God. Ah. Jesus. Father, we worship you. We want to pray. Father, we bring our dear father. Let's pray for him. We bring our dear father unto your hands. 
viewers all over the world. Join me and my beloved wife as we pray for all our leaders that at this time they need God. At this time they need direction from God and not from man. At this time they need to seek the help of God and not the help of man and not their own help. Father, we bring your servant to your hands, O oh Lord. Father, help him to walk in your ways. Help him to follow your ways, your direction, and not the ways of the elders that did not do well. Oh God, give him wisdom like Solomon. Give him wisdom like Solomon. Grace like David. Grace like Daniel. Grace like Moses, but he will see the promised land. He will not end halfway. He will not end halfway. Because I remember how my father the pastor of, of the Balai Bible Church he comes and the governor will click him. They will go and pray on the stadium. What about David Biomi? What about Adeboye? What about other men of God with their names we are not pronounced? Father, because this man has identified with your servant, oh God, give him knowledge. Give him understanding. Amen. Give him wisdom. Amen. Give him knowledge. Amen. Give him understanding. Amen. To rule us that we will not see crisis Amen. at the time of election. That people will not die. Comes general election in River State again. That he will settle with whoever that they are having differences. He will settle with whoever they are having differences. That come general election that there will be no death. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31. He said, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Father, I pray. Let all bitterness, let all man of anger, let all man of wrath or whatever be put away from our dear governor. All malice be put away from him that he may rule this state as he has declared that it's a, state, it's, a, it's, it's a Christian state that he will rule this state in your ways and the light of God will shine in river state. The light of God will shine in river state. Amen. Light of God will shine in river state Amen. because it has declared the river a, 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 a Christian state. My Father, my God, as many who are there in the isolation center, Holy Spirit of living God. You are the God that he led. Father, go to the isolation center and heal as many who are tested positive. Now, as by this time, as we are praying, go to the isolation center. Holy Spirit, let there be massive healing. Amen. Let there be massive healing. Amen. Let there be massive healing. Amen. Let there be healing. Amen. At the sound of my voice, Amen. let there be healing. Amen. Exactly this time. Amen. Exactly at this time. Amen. 458. Let there be massive healing. Amen. Father, ye every patient Amen. at the isolation center in River State Amen. and wherever they are, Father, bring an end to this COVID-19. Bring an end to this situation. Amen. Bring an end to this problem. Amen. Because it says, surely there is an end. And the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Father, bring an end to this issue. Holy Spirit will give you glory. Father will give you honor. What a great God are you. What a mighty God are you, Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We adore you, Lord. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. 
take all adoration. Let your name alone be alive in Zod. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Blessed be your name, Lord. Oh, my Father, my God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ah, Jesus. Be thy exalted, Lord. My Father. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Mighty Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. amen. And amen. We are branching out. We are coming out of COVID-19 in River State. Very soon. Very soon. Very soon. God will do greater mighty thing in our state. Because it's a Christian state. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Savior. We want to thank God. Normally, our tradition, at least we praise God after messages. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Sing How sweet thy son. Father, God bless your name. That same oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord. Father, we are once lost, but we are now found in you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, all the viewers. Thank you, everybody that joined us. Thank you, even as you share the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen.